Good evening everybody, welcome back to another video. Thanks for tuning in, thanks for stopping by. And uh, if this is your first time to the channel, let me introduce myself in the usual way. My name is Ben Cardle and I am the author of the best-selling book, The Monographs, which details the real-world methods for the skill set of Sherlock Holmes, how to develop them and how to train them and how to make them your own. And I now spend my days teaching people and businesses and elite security professionals how to do this for themselves, for the protection of themselves and those around them. So if that sounds like something that you're interested in, then by all means subscribe to the channel and uh, you'll know exactly what you're letting yourself in for moving forward from there. Now, today we've got a, uh, a particularly incendiary topic uh, to look at by, by popular request. There was more than a fair share of you uh, that asked for this one and so I figured that I would do it, but here are the rules uh, for this because it's revolving around Shimi Mabegum and her body language from the most recent uh, interview that she did on uh, breakfast television here in the UK. Um, so, should this devolve into um, insults being levied, uh, any, any form of hate speech uh, of any kind, at all, this isn't the, the avenue for that, right? We're, we're here to study non-verbals, and uh, communication that way to see what's truly going on under, underneath the surface. I have my own opinions on hate speech, uh, and this isn't the place for it, right? This isn't the place. So there'll be none of that. So if it does devolve um, into that uh, in the comments, I'll just turn them off. Um, what I am interested in is, is your thoughts on this, genuinely, what you can see. Um, and the likes and how this forms your opinion of uh, what she's going to do next, what she's thinking of doing moving forwards, uh, because that's what this is the place for. So just because I work in the field doesn't necessarily mean that I've got all of the information to hand, right? So I'm, I'm always keeping my ears open for exactly what you guys have to say and uh, where your sources are coming from. As always, we are examining this video um, upon the context of what we what we know at this time, which uh, there has been much said uh, in the UK of of Miss Begum. Um, if if you're not familiar with it, here's a brief timeline of events that I got from uh, the Independent. Um, August ninety nine, she's born. Feb twenty fifteen, there was an international hunt launch to find three schoolgirls who were making their way to so called Islamic states. In, in Syria. Um, Shemima was 15 at the time uh, and she's got two 16 year old friends with her. October 2017, a US backed alliance of Syrian fighters takes full control of Raqqa, ending three years of ISIS rule in the city. Um, 13th of Feb 2019, there was the Times war correspondent that found uh, Miss Begum and uh, she told him that she wants to return to the UK to raise her child, but she didn't regret her decision to join ISIS. Uh, she'd had two other children that have sadly died of malnutrition. But interestingly enough, uh, in terms of her behaviour, from a behavioural analysis, she'd said um, that she'd been unfazed by some of the things that she'd seen, speaking about seeing heads in buckets um, and the like, uh, and referring to these, peoples of, uh, these people as uh, enemies of Islam. 19th of Feb 2019, uh, she's been stripped of her citizenship and sent on. Where are we? July, Court of Appeal rules that Shamima Begum should be permitted to return to the UK in order to fairly contest the British government's decision to revoke her citizenship. That's, that's it, it, basically in, in relationship to the right to a fair trial. Um, 26th of February of this year, the ruling was appealed and sent to the Supreme Court on Feb 26. This is, the Supreme Court ruled unan unanimously against bringing Miss Begum back, thus reversing the previous decision. And uh, on the 15th is when she went on TV. Uh, it's now the 20th today, and that's the interview we're going to be having a look at. Uh, one of the things to note, because I have seen pictures, there's a picture on the, uh, on the independent article of what she's wearing at the time. Um, Lots of people remarking about her, her clothing, not wearing the hijab. Uh, now, I'll, I'll be honest, right? I know very little of, of the culture 
uh, over there, rules, regulations regarding what you can wear, what you can't wear, why, uh, why it's a, a thing in terms of your religion, which is all very important information for us to be thinking about when we're reading this person in this scenario. So all I did was Google it. That's it. So make of that what you will. Uh, and that the kalam will either be yeah, kalilan, kalilan, but nothing more than that. Uh, so the purpose of the hijab is modesty. Uh, its intention is to put forth a woman's intelligence, personality and opinion before her femininity in the society. Basic rules being um, cover all body parts except the face, hands and feet. Um, not wearing transparent clothes or scarves. Not wearing clothes that are too tight and revealing. The, the clothes shouldn't show the feminine curves. Um, uh, attractive makeup, loud accessories, uh, uh, appealing luscious perfumes in public is not acceptable and uh, boyfriend-girlfriend relations, dating, physical contact uh, isn't permissible. Um, the above rules for a hijab wearing uh, women are valid for all men except the woman's father, husband, brothers, sons, uncles, grandfather, father-in-law and son-in-law. They, they don't wear them in their beds. Uh, they're not allowed to take them off even if it's 100 degrees outside. Don't take them off for special occasions like weddings. As well, so it seems pretty, pretty vehement uh, in terms of the uh, the regulations regarding wearing them. So, with that in mind, let's have a little look, see what's going on. One of the things uh, I should mention as well, given the topic, is this is going to be prone to uh, uh, reflecting a lot of people's bias uh, in terms of the things that she said previously. Um, solidifying an opinion of who and why and what she is moving forward into now and how does that um, affect us uh, in terms of determining exactly what's going on from a from a bias standpoint this, again this has no place here because we're, we're analyzing it purely on this and, uh, and nothing more right a lot of people commenting uh, particularly on the potential for my biases um, as, as well which is fair I, I have done as much work as I possibly can to eradicate them. I have nothing to gain out of my opinion one way or the other on uh, on this beggar. I'm, I'm going to look at this before having any kind of a decision being made and uh, just tell you exactly what I'm seeing. But this is on first view of the interview. Now I'm to understand that this is uh, sort of a best bits. It's not the full one. It's not the full one. I think this went out for around 25 to 30 minutes. Uh, and this clip that I have is only eight minutes as well. So already we're dealing with uh, uh, a, a small sample of the details there. However, let's get cracking before someone else moans. First live interview. Shamima, there is already furious reaction to your presence on the programme, and I'll tell you the reason why. Because when someone goes to join ISIS, they are considered a terrorist. Is that a fair description of you? Um, no, I don't think so, because the reason I came to ISIS, to Syria, was not for any violent reasons, not because I wanted to be a terrorist. It was because I thought I was doing the right thing as a Muslim, and I, was, I, I did not want to hurt anyone, you know, in Syria or anywhere else in the world. So what have we got, first of all? We've got a lot of different non-verbal signs that could be pointing one way or the other straight away. Both of them relate to signs of um, anxiety which one would expect given the position that she's in in terms of the onslaught of, of, uh, of difficulty, of, of insults, of press, of whatever it is that she's, that she's openly bringing her way at the moment, but that anxiety will go one of two ways. It will go uh, anxiety about um, uh, being put under the spotlight. Um, she might not be a very confident public speaker, um, but it also could be relating towards signs of deception at this time. A few seconds in, very uh, arguably impossible to uh, to note one way or the other at the moment, but we've got a lot of asymmetrical behaviour in the shoulders, 
uh, a lot of control breathing there's uh, there's the, there's the uh, arms down between the uh, the legs in this kind of scenario for the self soothing notion uh, of the uh, of the fingers and the hands coming together to quell those growing levels um, blink rates are going up at the time as well but important thing to notice more so than anything for me at this moment is how she's dressed how she's how she's dressed if she left to go and pursue this purely religious outlook then why is this not reflected in her opinion she's got her nails done jewelry um, westernized clothing hair moved forward purposefully because if it is as hot as it looks out there then the right side will be getting warmer because it's undercover so all of this at the moment speaks of uh, the potential for coaching so can you explain what you mean by wanting to do the right thing by leaving your family and going to join a death cult At the time, firstly, I did not know that it was a death, death cult. I thought it was an Islamic community that I was joining. And at the time, I had just recently started becoming very religious. And I was being told, I was being fed a lot of information on the internet by people in ISIS telling... So we've got growing levels of these anxiety signs again. Slower blinks forming into blocks. Um, dried throats causing that uh, almost gulping behaviour from increased breathing activity. The, the pulling on the hair as well, all speaking towards these growing levels. Now again, this could be because she is, um, uh, what's the word I need? She's repentant? I think that, is that the right word? I don't know. She, she feels sorry for having made the wrong decision in leaving and being led astray, or it's deceptive practices to try and get into the country at this stage, all of which the, um, the, the non-verbal cues of anxiety could be argued to one way or the other but again it is the disfluencies um, in the behavior as well and you could make the arguments that there's no uh, behavioral reflection in the in the face this could be a cultural thing I don't know um, at this stage it, it, it could be a, a, a cultural reflection in terms of putting forward um, the intelligence of, of the woman uh, again as the hijab was designed to do in that if you're seen as being too emotional it diminishes your standpoint um, uh, around others me that I need to I need to come because I can't be a good Muslim in the UK and that my family will only drag me down with them if so you yeah. were f you were 15 yeah. when you left with your your two friends are you are you saying here based now, on that last yeah. answer Shami Culturally or not, these smiles that are, that are leaking, that's a concern. That is a concern for me, moving forwards. That's something that I'd like to explore because there's a higher level of incongruence there towards the growing levels of anxiety. Why would those subtle smiles be leaking? Um, they're partially asymmetrical as well, but that doesn't mean that's, um, that's anything to do with contempt or anything like that because that just could be the reflection of a natural smile. Now, are you saying that you were groomed? That's, sorry to do, I know people hate it when I pause and whatever, but that's bad form on Richard Madeley's uh, part. Uh, that's a leading question. That's a leading question. So, if she is looking for an out, she'll jump on it, all right? And regardless of whether it's true or not now, that's the, the, the question itself has somewhat diluted the worth of the information that, it, that could come after. I think, yes, I was groomed and taken advantage of and manipulated into coming, yes. And what did you think you were going to do because when you got... Because most 15-year-olds don't know. No. So, it's all right, we've got a bit of a delay on this, so we're going to talk over each other from time to time. That's just That's important happen. to note. Um, what did you because think you were going to do when you got to Syria? What were you expecting to do? What were you expecting to happen to you? 
just get married and have children and live an Islamic, a pure Islamic life. Now again, there we go, get married, have children. There's symmetry in there. So we can start to draw differing um, uh, directions in terms of how we uh, examine this information moving forwards in terms of where the asymmetry pops up versus when the symmetry pops up because she's shown that she's capable of both. By itself, ir irrelevant. We need more context. Yeah. But, you that, must, yeah. but, but you must have known what was going on in Syria, that there was a full-scale war going on. Again, it's coming from um, here. And that ISIS was attempting to basically colonise the Middle East through acts of brutal terror. I mean, you must have known Adjustment that. of the back. Now there's no back support on the seat. I did not know that there was war. I, I knew that there was war, but not in the places where women and children were living. I... Now, I would need to know how long she's been sat there uh, initially, right, before that chair's, chair caused any level of discomfort, because to be doing this immediately shows that that anxiety is growing into discomfort. It's affecting more parts of her body and she's doing more to keep it at bay. That's why we're starting to see more signs of self-soothing, more signs of blink rates going, more signs of, uh, of shutter speed slowing down, more, more signs of looking away in terms of blocking behavior, more signs uh, of pulling the hair, of chest breathing, of self-soothing in the hands. That chair could be quite important. But it's, it's an almost childlike response to go, I didn't know. It, I thought where I was going, it would be safe for me and for any children I would have. And I did not know that ISIS was, you know, trying to take over the world. I am asking the British people to forgive this. me because I made a mistake at a very young age. You know, m most young people don't know what they want to do with their lives and they are very confused and they can easily be, fall into things like this. And I know it's very hard for the British people to try and forgive me because, you know, they've, they've lived in fear of ISIS. They've lost loved ones because of ISIS, but I also have lived in fear of ISIS. And I also have loved, lost loved ones because of ISIS. So we've got exclusions uh, in terms of, oh, I didn't know, I wasn't informed. This is when you hear people say things like, not to the best of my knowledge uh, and, and, and this kind of thing. It's a way to sort of exculpate yourself uh, is that the right word? I don't know where that came from, if it wasn't. Um, of, of any responsibility, right, uh, towards the actions that you've taken. So if you're looking to make um, uh, a genuine apology, if you, uh, if you look at it on a, on a, on a psychological level, uh, in terms of whether apologies are accepted or not, there needs to be the acknowledgement of fault. And there isn't. There isn't that. There's no outward signs of accepting that she has done anything wrong. It's, it's lip service to achieve desired ends at this stage. So I can sympathise with them in that way, but... And again, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm pausing, I'm pausing. But uh, that's, that's just another thing that's occurred to me. Even though she's done her best conversationally to put her on the same side as those that have been uh, affected by the terrorist attacks, how she's speaking, if you listen to the tenses, it's, it's still us and them. It's still us and them. So there's a disfluency, uh, again, there in the way that she's speaking. And I, I know that it's very hard for them to forgive me, but I say from the bottom of my heart that I am so sorry if I ever offended anyone by coming here, if I ever offended anyone by the things I said in hall. Eye blocking down, partial smile, shoulders again, on the one side being asymmetrical, I'm so sorry. I don't think tonally there's, there's much relevance that we can take here because there are, there are cultural intonations that we must acknowledge. So I'm not, I'm not looking into that 
at this stage and, and again if we look at the way the skin is natural naturally reflective over time in terms of emotional displays you, those who've watched me for any great length of time know that I'm quite expressive and animated right so my forehead will show a lot of the action of my emotions that I take because collagen wears out over time elastin wears out and there's there's nothing here there's no reflection of of outwardly felt states which again could come from previous years of hijab wearing which raise, raises further questions about why she's doing this now there's, there's too many there's too many uh, inaccuracies to the stories of her non-verbals versus the content of what she, of what she's saying if you look at the way that um, uh, most people working in this field will will, will tell you about um, figuring out exactly what's going on if you look at verbal content in terms of the words that are actually said this is how you start to pull apart the inaccuracies and in stories and narrative and that kind of thing if you're looking into non-verbals face body language all of this kind of stuff that's how you start to pull apart inaccuracies and in, inaccuracies in terms of emotional content and there's there's so many cross wires and both sides here I just said those things because I lived in fear of the women and I did not want to do those interviews anyway, and I was unaware of what ISIS had done in the UK and in other parts of the world, and I should not have been making comments about things I didn't know about. Well, you seem to say you don't know a lot. The Manchester bombing yeah. left, was the murder of 22 people, including children. The youngest victim was eight yeah. years old, more than a 1,000 people. So even with that delay, even with the delay that uh, uh, Richard Madeley spoke about, we're still seeing no outward reflection of anything. Which, if she's gone through any kind of coaching, which, given the uh, the outwardly westernised displays that she's trying to say, um, and there was a couple of moments uh, that I read about um, in her accent um, when she says "got." things like that it comes across I, I can't do accents and again those of you who watched will know but the Americanized got got it's it's up there that's how she says it uh, and phrases like got anything on me they haven't got anything on me it's directly uh, in uh, in uh, flying in the face of exactly what she was talking about before being strictly uh, Muslim and the like in this area the verbal content revealing the inaccuracies again but we're seeing no signs uh, even though she's she's talking about the, the the murder 22 people kids young mm -hmm. yeah 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 like you're listening to a a, a a story were injured it was a horrific attack and for you to have said that there was a justification sickened everybody who heard what you said. And people find it hard to believe when you say, I didn't know about ISIS. I didn't know it was a death cult. I didn't know about the dreadful things that happened. And now you're saying you didn't know about the Manchester bombing. People are going to find it sickening to hear you claim ignorance of those things again she's verbalizing the fact that there's there's no um acknowledgement of doing wrong at all it's it's in the cliched example of uh, of when you see on talk shows the uh the, the boyfriend that's been accused of cheating and they're like oh i didn't know i was drunk I, well, when I was 15 and ah. I was doing my research on ISIS. Ah. Well, there you go. Oh, oh, oh God, that stumped her. Oh God, that threw her, that threw her for, well, it's thrown me for a loop. That's thrown her for a loop in terms of her communication tactics there. She jumped immediately to an exclusion. When I was 15, doing my research, too young, didn't know. So the research I was getting was from people online in, in ISIS because I thought that that would be the most reliable source because they're in ISIS and they were feeding me a lot of lies and they were giving me a lot of excuses 
about the things that maybe I was seeing they on the media, like the, the attacks and things that ISIS were doing in Syria and Iraq. So they always had an excuse. And about the Manchester bombing and other bombings that happened while I was in ISIS, I had no connection to the outside world while I was in ISIS. I didn't have a phone. I didn't, my husband couldn't use the internet. So we really were unaware of anything that was going on outside. We were only aware of what was going on within the Middle East. So you stand, you stand. When I came to Hull, I heard a lot of stories about women. I'm going to presume that was a cut there. Because that doesn't make a great deal of sense otherwise. Attacking other women for maybe uncovering their faces or t talking to journalists. And, and I heard about, you know, them threatening to burn people's tents with their children inside. And at the time, I had just given birth to my son. I was very protective of him because obviously I lost my other two children. See, I you, can, you can see the difference there as well in terms of her displays. I think that's a story that she actually heard of burning their tents with the kids inside. You know, there's a lot of symmetrical action going on in terms of her behavior. Uh, and you'll notice as well that we've seen no other discomfort signs growing since. Felt a large responsibility towards him to protect him. I had no choice. Sorry, I, I should explain that point again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I know, back and forth, back and forth. But this is how I do it. <laughs> uh, what I meant about the, uh, the, uh, the, the chair, by the way, is initially, when uh, when that happened, it was right at the start of the interview. So, and as this has gone on, it's gone on longer than it than the uh, the time that it first appeared towards the start of the interview and when that behaviour first arised. So, what we can start to do there is to discount the possibility of muscular fatigue from sitting on an uncomfortable chair, showing signs that that particular move was a growing level of uh, of a nonverbal response to discomfort. In speaking to journalists, I had no choice in uncovering my face or covering my face. I knew that these women had phones and they were watching everything I was doing and saying on the media. And, and I was just living in fear of them constantly, that one day they would just come to my tent and kill me in the night with my son. So what's And I know that's hard for some people to like understand, but it was fear. That's been the only time that she's been um, uh, emotionally charged in the voice, you can hear it start to dry up uh, and the pitch start to increase as, as one does when they're, they're on the brink of, uh, you know, talking about things that uh, scare us or make us upset and the like, there is the, there is the potential waver in there. But it's caused from a drying, uh, a, 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 a physical drying out uh, of whatever the organs are back there, which could also come from increased breathing as a result of growing levels of anxiety. So what's changed, yeah. Samina? Buried smile again. Well, now I'm in a different camp, obviously. It's, it's a little, it's slightly more safer in this camp compared to Hall. Of course, I am completely sorry for anyone who has been affected by ISIS. You know, I in no way Agree, like agree with what they did. I don't. I'm not trying to justify what they did. It's not just. It's not justifiable to kill innocent people in the name of religion. And I just. Yeah, we we knew that anyway. But this again. This there's, there's too many disfluences. Uh, I'm sorry for the people that have been affected. Yes. Are you sorry for what you did? That's what we're asking. Uh, in a nutshell, and the, the thing about being in a different camp, that was that was weird again with the slow eye block uh, there. So there's not something that's, that's adding up in terms of her feelings towards the camp. She's trying to paint it as different and therefore better, partially less dangerous. That doesn't ring completely true. Verbal content, again. Non-verbals leaking emotional content, again. I want to apologise. One of the reasons... No, I did not. And the, the... Okay, so... I, I know where the no, I did not comes from. It was in that Telegraph article. She'd just been asked about whether she had been directly involved in um, the, 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 the terrorist behaviour, whether she'd actually helped... Um, get the guys into their, their suicide vests and their, their bombs and, and whatever kind of apparatus they use. I'm willing to go to court and face the people who are making these claims and refute these claims because I know that I did not do any 
anything in ISIS apart from be a mother and a wife. And these claims, I think, are just being made to make me look worse because the government don't actually have anything on me. There you go. Right on cue. On me. Again. Don't have anything on me. Slow eye blocks again. No. I, 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 I don't buy this. At all. The whole thing reeks of coaching, reeks of incongruencies in narrative, in behaviour, in uh, emotional content, verbal content. And there's no evidence, you're saying, that you did these things? There's no evidence because nothing ever happened. Why did you stay so long? If she had not moved um, afterwards, that would have been the most declarative thing that she said throughout this. There's no evidence because nothing ever happened. Her internals are going, Oh, God, we're about to freak out. Ugh. Hair pull. What would you say to people watching this who say, well, she would say all of this now because ISIS lost? After a, an extraordinary Again, in initial of bout of, pulls, of success, ISIS was pushed back, hemmed in, and should be hot basically anyway because destroyed the as a fighting the force there. So you were on the losing side. Of this here to assuage uh, the and discomfort. you would say all of this now because they lost. But if they hadn't, if they actually had established and kept a caliphate, as they, as they describe it, you would have been a sort of queen bee, wouldn't you? No, I would not have. If ISIS was still much in power, I may have still been stuck in ISIS, I will admit that, but not because, not by choice, but, but by force, because lack of any other way of getting out, you know? I, if ISIS were to come back now, if they were to come to the gates right now and say, who wants to join us, and whoever doesn't join us will kill them, I would rather die. I would rather die than go back to ISIS. Well, indeed, the, the two girls Reflective that you... Again. You see, now, that, that last thing, though, an incredible comment, an incredible gesture to make, there's no real way to qualify her position there. And again, that's, that was the most um, emotive she was through the whole piece. At all. kind of makes me, I'm, I'm, well, not doesn't kind of, I'm going to track down the whole interview and uh, watch that as well just to see where uh, my opinions change, if any, if they do. Uh, but no, that, uh, that reeks to high heaven for my two pennies. But let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, I'm very interested to hear other people's thoughts uh, and opinions on this. And uh, yeah. Uh, again, keep them observational. <laughs> Nothing more than that, all right? Or I'm turning them off. Um, but yeah, if you got something out of that, guys, at least from a, an educational, observational standpoint, then by all means, subscribe to the channel. And uh, we'll see you on Friday for another podcast episode.